you led a session in one of the previous cohorts on fintech, and there's obviously a wealth of knowledge when you look at QED Fontes as two primary investors in the region that focus on fintech. So I guess that that begs the question: Why is fintech so hot in Latin America right now? Yeah, I mean, I think I think fintech is hot sort of globally, um, but I think in in Latin America specifically. I'd say there's sort of two parts to two parts to it. And I'll answer first sort of why is fintech so interesting in Latin America and B is sort of why now and why is this all sort of booming at this moment? And I think to start with, you know, if you look at the Latin American market and sort of why is fintech attractive, there's a couple of, you know, interesting dynamics um, that objectively just make it sort of an interesting market for an investor and for startups. Um, to start with, you know, I'll say, Pretty generally, if you look across Latin America, the the financial services sort of sector has been pretty consolidated. The banking sector, um, historically, right, where you know a couple of the banks have probably seventy or eighty percent market share um, in terms of you know the transactions and financial services, um, and so there's been sort of little, I would say, incentive to innovate on behalf of the banks and, and just a very consolidated um, system. Uh, on the other hand, you also have what results in sort of a very profitable system for the same reasons, right? There's the, the same banking sector. They're sort of ha have had market share for a while. Um, it's very profitable. Uh, and so there's there's what this results in is sort of, I would say, suboptimal customer, exper customer experiences, um, more expensive products because there is sort of little to no innovation going on. Um, and then there's also sort of this sector of the population that has a lack of trust in financial institutions for the same reasons, right? Like they want nothing to do with the, the incumbent banks because historically they've had poor experiences, they've had expensive products. Um, and so there's sort of this this rise or this whole sector of um, informal sort of financial systems. And so when you look at this sort of zooming out, right, you have on the one hand, the consolidated incumbents. On the other hand, you have these informal systems. Um, and then you have a large population that's still transacting in cash and still relatively underbanked. Um, and, and so there's just a lot of opportunity to actually disrupt that and provide with sort of very little, I guess, low barriers uh, to provide a better customer experience, uh, more inexpensive products, products that actually cater to the underbanked or meet people where they're at um, versus trying to sort of imitate what exists. Um, and I think all of that just provides like a, a very large market opportunity um, because there has been, you know, little to no innovation in the past. Um, but then also sort of a very exciting time for um, startups and entrepreneurs to actually start to address some of these um, some of these products and services in a different way. So I would say sort of the opportunity has been there historically, um, and I think that's what makes it sort of attractive uh, as a market. But then on the other side, you have the, the timing question and sort of why are we seeing this boom now? Um, and I think there's a couple of factors here that are probably are not necessarily unique to Latin America. Um, some are, but I'd say, you know, one is is definitely COVID um, and the rise of sort of e-commerce and digital transactions like this past year has just forced a shift in behavior and consumer behavior that usually is a lot more difficult to achieve, right, in terms of penetration of of mobile apps, of smartphones, of people actually, you know, being comfortable using their money online or paying online. Um, so there's that aspect of it, which has sort of been a trend globally. Um, then I th I'd say specific to Latin America, there's also changing regulations. So I think, especially in Brazil, right, you've seen over the past year, um, the implementation of PICS, you've seen Colombia and Mexico start to implement some fintech specific regulations, all of which sort of are I would say um, sort of incentivizing or catalyzing more innovation um, and sort of newer business models. Uh, and I'd say, you know, PIX in particular has the interesting dynamic that it's sort of mimicking, I would say, the cash dynamic where, where it's like real time payments. Um, and, and you see a lot of sort of populations that weren't previously transacting digitally um, now able to access it through PIX. So there's the regulation aspect. Um, and then there's, I would say, sort of the evolution of new types of businesses and customers, right? I think as we see sort of more startups, more businesses, um, different generations sort of leading businesses, there's also a demand for just newer services um, and different types of, uh, I would say, payments, lending, financing, um, where there's just a more openness, I would say, to um, to these financial uh, yeah, disruptors or financial services. Um, 
And so I think all of that is leading to a fintech boom in Latin America, right? The combination of it's an attractive market to start with, but then, you know, we are actually starting to see consumers shift their behavior and being willing to um, adopt and transact online, um, plus this evolution of the types of, of needs and businesses that are existing. So I think all of that has sort of made this a very exciting time to be, I would say, both a fintech founder um, and a fintech investor, for sure.